Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Anderson. I'm a chiropractor in Ferndale, Michigan. This video is the first in a series of, that examines each part of the immune system and how it works. Today we're gonna to talk about the microbiome. The microbiome is made up of billions of bacteria, viruses, parasites, as well as candida. It controls 70 to 80% of our immune system. Now, 90% of pathogens, viruses, bacteria, etc., enter our body via our alimentary tract, our mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and then it reaches the gut where it's met by our microbiome. All these different microbes keep pathogens in check. They keep other, each other in check. Now, if we take a look at this drawing, this is the outer part of the gut and it contains chemical and physical barriers. And within these tissues are substances that trigger different immune reactions. Immune reactions from our innate immune system, our nervous system, our interferon system, or our acquired immune system. The next part is a thick mucus layer that helps to contain our, our microbes. Now, let's say you have some vegetables. When you eat your vegetables, you get fiber. And that we were all told that fiber makes us poop. But really what fiber does, since it really doesn't get digested, once it gets to our gut, uh, it starts to ferment. And that fermented fiber becomes fuel for all our microbes. Now, and it also helps to thicken our mucus layer or keep it thick. Now, let's say we have some junk food and that includes fried foods, grain, corn, wheat, rice, oats, and soy, or just sugar like cake, cookies, candy. Let's say we have a piece of cake. We eat the cake. We are so full of joy when we eat that cake. But it turns to sugar real fast, and that sugar goes right into our bloodstream. What's left over is not the preferred food of our microbiome. In fact, it's starving our microbiome. If we're filling up on the sugar, we're not feeding our microbiome, and it starts to get less and less diverse. And because the, the microbiome starts to break down, the mucus layer starts to break down. So this becomes less contained. And eventually, if we do this over a long period of time, this mucus layer essentially dissolves and then the chemical barriers start to dissolve. And we start to get a, a situation where we have a leaky gut. That leaky gut causes a dysfunctional immune system for example, allergic reactions, or how COVID-19 um, actually starts to cause us trouble. Now, another thing that can, that can cause trouble with our microbiome are xenobiotics. Xenobiotics is a big fancy word for medications and other chemicals. Medications such as antibiotics, steroids, acetaminophen, Motrin, aspirin, etc. Also pesticides we may find on our foods, pestis, and that also includes sugar substitutes. In fact, one of the sugar substitutes called Splenda, otherwise known as sucralose, originally was created to be a pesticide, but somebody actually accidentally tasted it, and now it's in our food source. Now, because it's a pesticide, what do you think it's gonna to do to our microbes? It's probably gonna damage our microbes and kill off quite a bit of it. So, sugar replacements are not good for our gut, just like the sugar's not good for our gut. Your best bet is to eat your veggies. A couple other things that can affect our microbiome is getting adequate sleep, also managing our stress levels. If we don't, if we have overabundance of stress, say we're watching 
the news, or I like to call the propaganda channels, that tell us over and over and over how this COVID-19 is going to kill us all. And you got to stay home because that is your, that's for your safety. Now, we're at a point now where we've been under lockdown or our stay-at-home order here in Michigan where the curve is flattened, okay? Or we're pretty close to it. But the problem is once you, once you release everyone back out into society, you haven't really done anything to help to educate the public on how to increase their resistance to infection, on how to, cre how to increase the body's resilience to bounce back after it gets sick. So when you go out, you're going to get a spike in more cases. Like they're saying, there's going to be a second or a third wave. Well, that doesn't have to happen if you educate the public on how to make the immune system stronger. So if you've been eating your vegetables and you've been getting adequate sleep and you've been turning off the news or propaganda channel, you have a, you've, you've achieved a stronger immune system. But if you've been eat, pounding uh, pizza and eating bread and cake and cookies and candy this whole time and drinking a lot of alcohol as well as not and staying up all night watching Netflix so you don't get adequate sleep, well, you've weakened your immune system. So this lockdown is for naught. So make the changes you have to make. Your resistance and your resilience is your responsibility to get this country back where it needs to be. We'll see you next time.